Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, my cheating ex-wife can't accept that I'm engaged and moving on. Come, let's explore these real life stories. Discovered my ex-wife's affair the day she was admitted into the hospital. Now, years later, she can't accept my engagement to my fiancé. If there was ever a prize for the most horrible way to learn of your significant other's affair, I would probably win it and be in its hall of fame. Like so many people in this sub, I suddenly found myself as a member of a club that nobody ever wants to be part of. I will never forget the sound of my ex-sister-in-law's voice as she kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, over and over on the phone while I drove home from a week-long business trip. I was confused and had absolutely no idea what she meant, but only after I managed to calm her down somewhat did she inform me that my wife was in the hospital and that I need to hurry home. My mind went into overdrive as I tried to get more information as well as not crash while I began speeding to get there faster. The only thing she told me is that it was an assault, then cut the call and wouldn't answer when I tried to call her again. A bit of background, my ex and I met in our mid-twenties. It was through a mutual friend at a barbecue. At first, she seemed almost too good to be true. Not only was she incredibly beautiful, but she was also shy and introverted. It took a while for us to officially date, but once it happened, I was over the moon. When we first tried to get intimate, she suddenly started crying. Should have taken this as a bad sign. I freaked out and thought it was something I did, but she apologized the next day and told me she was triggered. As it turns out, two years before meeting me, she was in a long-term relationship with a guy that was abusive, both emotionally, physically, and mentally. He would degrade her during their moments of intimacy, then apologize afterward. She had a flashback but reassured me that it had nothing to do with me. So, we took things slow as she was still in therapy. It was tough, but because I loved her, I believed once we got over this, it would make our relationship stronger. And for a while, it honestly appeared that way. I noticed she had been getting down a lot more and wasn't being as intimate as before. She would keep her phone close to her and even stop gently addressing things that upset her. I tried to talk to her about it, but she assured me that she was fine and this was a phase she was going through. Having no reason not to trust her, I let it go. She would sometimes go to her sister's place and spend the night, telling me she just needed a bit of girl time with her sister. The day I got that fateful phone call was the day she was meant to be keeping her sister company again. I remember rushing into the hospital, barely breathing, and frantically asking about my wife. Then, the world's most understanding and patient police officer sat me down to explain what happened. He told me he was a friend of my sister-in-law and he happened to respond to a domestic disturbance call. He arrived on the scene to find a couple fighting. The supposed boyfriend was on top of the female, punching her, and she was screaming, trying to scratch him. This didn't make any sense to me because, one, this had nothing to do with my wife because we're married, and two, literally everyone who knew my wife knew she wouldn't do that. He gave me a knowing look and placed his hand on my shoulder, then told me to be very calm because said girlfriend was actually my wife. If it weren't for the severity of the situation, I would have laughed in his face. But something in the way he said everything made me believe him. I then was ushered in by a nurse to see my wife and what greeted me to this day, I still can hardly find the words to describe. I just stood there for what seemed like an eternity. Then, a doctor came in and explained her injuries to me. The jaw was slightly fractured, her left eye was completely swollen shut and had massive bruising covering half of her face as well as three broken ribs. Then the doctor dropped another bomb and told me she was pregnant. I still couldn't understand how this happened and then I caught sight of her sister. She at first tried to avoid me but, at the persuasion of her police officer friend, she told me what she knew. It turns out my wife's ex had gotten in contact with her five months ago. He was doing this redemption pyramid step thing where he would apologize to people he has wronged in order to clear his karma. They began talking more, then he convinced her to meet up for coffee and show her he was a changed man. Obviously, old feelings resurfaced, coupled with the fact that he appeared changed. Now, it soon developed into an emotional affair. 
My wife approached her sister for advice, who told her to take things slow and just get it out of her system if she needed to, which then led to a physical affair three months later. She actually told my wife that she should at least make peace with her ex in whatever form it may be, and even offered to cover for my wife once in a while. My sister-in-law was in tears at this point and kept apologizing to me that she didn't know about the abuse, as my wife never told anyone other than me and her therapist at the time about it. I was numb. I just couldn't feel anything and was absolutely dumbfounded by my wife's actions. When my wife finally woke up, I was there and she burst into tears upon seeing me. I spent the following months in zombie flight mode. There was individual counseling for her as well as marriage counseling for us at the strong urging of her family. In counseling, she was surprisingly forthcoming about how it happened and how she absolutely hated herself for causing me pain. She mentioned how, at one point on her way home from his place, she actually fantasized about driving into the river because she smelled like him and didn't want his scent to corrupt me, however that made sense. She said she tried to end it, but was too weak, and only after learning that she was pregnant that it actually woke her up and made her realize that any further contact with this man was toxic, to not only her, but the unborn child as well. Hence, she went to end things in person for good when he snapped on her. She became a shell of herself and developed a phobia for any other males but me. At one point, she couldn't even use the bathroom at night unless I was holding her hand. Sad, right? After the baby was born, we got a paternity test and he was mine. But the more time I spent with her, the more I realized I didn't hate my wife, I actually loathed her. I couldn't see the woman I married, but instead saw his leftovers each time I looked at her. I decided to leave because I was afraid I'd do something I'd regret and be exactly like her abusive ex. She begged me not to leave and even made the ridiculous offer of giving me a hall pass as well as slapping her if I wanted to. I knew at this point I had to get out. She was actually very generous during the divorce. She moved back into her parents and signed a very well thought out co-parenting plan issued by the courts. Moving forward three years later, I met my now fiancé by chance. I was in a bookstore with a buddy of mine and we were discussing Egyptian mythology when this beautiful woman approached me to correct me on my pronunciations of the Egyptian gods and cities. Needless to say, I was immensely impressed by not only her understanding but also by the fact that she is Egyptian herself. We exchanged numbers which eventually led us to dating. When I finally proposed to her, it was actually in front of the peach tree I had planted years ago. I got down on one knee, but before I got my answer, she ran into the house and then came out with a ring as well. Turns out, she was actually planning on proposing herself because she was madly in love with me and she didn't want any other woman to have me. My son, in all his sweet childlike innocence, told his mother what happened because he was present when it happened. My ex literally showed up that night, in the rain, yelling about how could I propose to her, my fiancé, in front of our tree, and that this isn't the end of us. I am completely exhausted at this point. I cannot go no contact because she is the mother of my child, but she is basically harassing me and my fiancé. How do I convince her to move on, to get over her fear of men, and not force me to get a restraining order? Sorry, it was long, but I am really desperate. Update. Since my last post, there have been significant developments. My son's birthday was approaching, and he expressed his desire to have a camp night to celebrate. He's a big fan of the outdoors, everything from camping and hiking to playing in rivers ranks among his favorite activities. Given the ongoing situation, our usual spots were off limits, so I suggested we use my backyard for his camping adventure. Another request he had was for my ex to sleep over as well. He wanted to recreate a scene from one of his favorite kid adventure shows. Before this incident, I neglected to mention that my ex-sister-in-law was a militant feminist. There's absolutely nothing wrong with feminism, but she had a tendency to take her beliefs to the extreme. After the divorce, she requested to meet for coffee and profusely apologized for her role in the demise of my marriage. She admitted knowing how much the relationship meant to my ex, but claimed she didn't want to hinder her sister's emotional growth or limit her experiences, whatever that means. She implored me not to abandon her sister, but staying married was out of the question for me. 
Since then, she has undergone a dramatic transformation, becoming the antithesis of her former self, from militant to reserved, mirroring the stereotype of an 80s woman. Following the incident and the charges against my wife's ex, he was sent to prison. Shortly thereafter, two other women came forward with their own stories of abuse at his hands. Tragically, both were in long-term relationships that ended disastrously because of his actions, one was married, the other engaged. Both women suffered from similar psychological issues as my ex, including low self-esteem and self-loathing. One of them even became pregnant by him, only to be abandoned immediately afterward. These women have openly stated that their association with him was a calamity, and their experiences have profoundly altered their perspectives on relationships and life, unfortunately for the worse. As for the recent developments following my initial post, the birthday planning for my son presented a unique challenge and an opportunity for healing and bonding, albeit under unconventional circumstances. My son's simple wish for a camp night and his desire to have his mother involved underscores the innocence and love children often bring into complicated adult situations, offering a glimmer of hope and a reminder of the importance of family connections, even when navigating through the aftermath of tumultuous relationships. Both parents sat on either side of our son, all three of us roasting marshmallows over the campfire. I had absolutely no intention of denying my son's birthday wishes, but at the same time, I couldn't allow my ex to sleep in the same tent as me and my son. That would be too disrespectful to my fiancé, even though she said she understood, it was clear she wasn't completely okay with it. My ex seemed to take advantage of this situation, constantly mentioning how much she was looking forward to spending the night with her two men, and even went so far as to buy an extensive amount of camping equipment that would put Bear Grylls to shame. She was clearly trying to rub it in my fiancé's face and wasn't being subtle about it. I had to tell her to stop several times, but she only relented when I threatened to invite her sister. Since our divorce, my ex has harbored a deep resentment toward her sister. While she acknowledges her own role in the destruction of our marriage, she blames her sister for encouraging the affair and not protecting her from making decisions that would ruin her life and, more importantly, in her eyes, our life together. The animosity between them has grown so intense that my ex refuses to let her sister spend any significant amount of time with our son, a decision that once led to my ex-sister-in-law experiencing severe depression. For instance, last year, during Thanksgiving at her mom's place, I sometimes attend for the sake of my son, as he absolutely loves seeing both of his parents celebrate together. My ex exploded at her sister, calling her a parasite and accusing her of being the catalyst for her ruined life. Her sister has been trying for years to make amends, but is often met with harsh and hurtful remarks. The relationship between my ex-sister-in-law and her parents was certainly strained for a while. One thing she confessed was that she never wanted me to see the real her, the ugly side she tried so hard to hide. She told me that the day I saw her in the hospital was the day she truly felt like her insides finally matched her outsides, and she never wanted me to see her like that. Although she did go through counseling, I still have doubts about how effective it really was. There's something I didn't mention in my original post. During the mandatory mediation sessions, she would sometimes sneak into my bed at night, holding me from behind and crying. She would also pick out my suit for me on those days, all while trying to convince me to stay in the marriage. I hated how emasculated I felt in those moments, knowing she was suffering, but I knew I had to leave before my resentment turned me into someone I didn't want to become. I thanked her for having the courage to share all of this with me, but I also made it clear that I was happy with where I was in life and with whom I was with. I told her that I genuinely hoped she would find someone who could make her happy too. But she just reiterated what she had said on the day of our divorce, that she would wait for me. I left the conversation feeling exhausted because it seemed like nothing I said was getting through to her. We decided to call it a night after that. My fiancé and I slept in one room of the tent, while my ex and my son slept in another. All in all, it was a good birthday for my son, but not such a good night for me. If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.